tucked away in the northwest corner of Scotland is an area known as the Great Wilderness. And this mountainous area is far from any roads and civilization and contains some of the best mountains in Scotland. And on today's trip, I was aiming to venture into this area with an aim to wild camp on the top of one of the finest peaks in all of Scotland. Look at this, absolutely magical and today I'm in, a, I'm in a remote part of Scotland or it certainly feels remote and these hills that you might be able to see in the, in the shot are the hills I'm heading to. So probably, yeah the area is called Fisherfield and those of you that know Scotland know that's probably about as remote as it gets so I'm trying to speed things up <laughs> by taking the old white trusty steed along this track but it's quite, uh, quite lumpy and bumpy so I'm just taking my time and the other thing is it's roasting warm but this is going to be some expedition it'll be interesting to see if I can make it to my uh, the top of the mountain to do the camp which is what I'm hoping to do but you know what it's that warm I'm not sure if I'm going to manage it so I better shop and get moving and see how we go let's go I was certainly glad of the bike and the, the relatively good track into this point. It, it was about eight, eight or nine kilometres with about 150, 160 metres of ascent. So it would have taken a lot longer on foot. So the, the bike certainly came in handy. And up until this point, the weather, as you can see, was looking rather fabulous. And I was looking forward to getting that uh, bike pack unpacked and into the, into the backpack and the hiking. To begin, so uh, I found a spot where I could, yeah, leave my bike and unpack the pannier and put everything into my backpack. Right, so here I am. Oh, this is where the hiking begins. I'm going to leave my bike here, and it's probably been about I don't know eight or nine kilometres to this point, and it's uh, saved me a bit of time to be honest with you. The, the track isn't tarred. And it's quite pebbly because it's on the floodplain, so you do need to uh, have a half decent bike. This old old fella did fine, so yeah, I'm going to un unpack the um, the pannier now and get everything into this, this rucksack, which is the first time I've used first time I've used this rucksack. So I'm hoping it's all going to fit in. But what a day! It's just glorious, absolutely fantastic. If it stays like this, we're in for a treat. So yeah, time to get the the kit out of the bike bag into my rucksack and then we'll start hiking along and I'll report back when I'm at the Loch Shore to let you know which way I'm going in, why I'm going in that way and what the plan for the evening is but uh, for now time to get sorted. Moving all the gear out of the, the bike pannier into the rucksack always takes a bit of time and you do have to be careful not just to throw everything in. I, I'm a bit guilty of that sometimes. I get excited and I want to get going so everything is, gets, gets thrown in but it's worthwhile just taking your time and packing the, the rucksack properly and carefully to make sure everything's where you need it to be and the, the weight of the sack is sitting correctly because there was a lot of hiking ahead of me and I didn't want to be uh, carrying an uncomfortable backpack so I did all that, I put the bike away and hid it, hid it in the long grass with the padlock before saddling the backpack and yeah starting the long long hike into the mountains. Thank you. 
The good track that I'd been following on the bike continues a little further to the head of the, the big loch and before long I was on the shores of the loch and skirting round to try and see if there was a path that would continue along the, the, the loch shore side to take me towards the mountains. But it was still fine, the weather was just absolutely fabulous and the only downside of the weather being so good was I could see the mountains ahead of me and I could see just how far away they still were. After following the shore for quite a distance it was time to, to break away and start to traverse up across the, the hillside towards the, the start of the, the ascent. And I was really quite lucky I'd left this for some dry weather because this ground here would have been absolutely sodding and wet had it been any other time. But it was, it was relatively good, there was no paths, but I was making progress. Oh, I'm going have a wee seat here. Oh, perfect. Oh, right. Oh, right, so where am I? <laughs> Not done a wee bit to camera for a while. And I've come along the shore to the, the loch that you saw me walking along is Loch Na Seagull. Se Seal, Sealna, Seal, Sealga, Sealga. Oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce it correctly, so I do apologise for messing, <laughs> messing that up. Anyway, there's a big, big old loch down there, and I followed the shore for a wee while, and then about a third of the way up, I've cut up um, a bit higher up. There's a lovely breeze here, and I'm heading towards the uh, the mountains behind me. I think you can maybe see them now. There's the, the first mountain here, and then there's a second one just beyond it. And I've always... Yeah, these are these are quite hard-won uh, mountains to summit because they're so far away from anywhere. And there's a lovely scramble that goes over the top of them. And I'd always thought that's the way I'd do it, but I'm not doing it uh, that way, mainly because I've got the big pack on. And it's a long way, and I don't know how tired it would have been by the time I got to the scramble, so I'm not taking any risks. I'm going to go in between the mountains into a quarry which leads up to a Bielich. and from there I'll just go up and down and up and down and, and camp round about there somewhere. And the other thing that's in that quarry is there's a lock-in and it's about 400 metres so I'm going to fill up with water there. That just means I don't have to carry all my water up and over a ridge which would have made the bag even heavier than it is so yeah uh, that's uh, that's my plan. How far on I get I don't know what time are we at. Time is now 24. I've been on the go for probably just over three hours and covered maybe 15, 16 kilometres maybe. I'm not sure exactly, but it's a fair old take into the middle of nowhere, but what a day, eh? Fantastic. Anyway, I'm going to sit here. I might take this backpack off for a while to give my shoulders a rest and just enjoy the sun for a while. So I did sit for a while here and just rested my backpack on the boulder just to give my shoulders a rest. I had been on the go for uh, for quite some time and I was starting to feel a bit tired and starting to question on whether I'd actually make it to the summit that I was wanting to go to, to wild camp. I was half thinking that um, yeah, daylight might run out and I might have to end up camping somewhere else. But anyway, I, I plodded on and made a diagonal towards the uh, towards the quarry and the locking with the first mountain right above me and it, at one point there was some loud, loud uh, rockfall that I heard just as I was sitting, taking it all in and I turned round expecting to see an avalanche of stones coming towards me but I just couldn't see where the rockfall was happening but it was certainly echoing right around the mountain. And... Oh, right. oh, it's a wee, a wee change of plan. I can't remember the last time I did a bit to camera. I think it was a way down before I started climbing. Anyway, my <laughs> I looked at the map and I thought, take a diagonal and um, traverse around the side of the hill. And, and my God, it's been uh, rough. There's no paths, which I which I knew, but um, I'm just glad it's been a really dry spell because, especially further down, it would have been a bog fest. Anyway, I decided to cut di diagonally across the hill, heading for the walking. But just the way the crags have been on the hill, it's pushed me higher up and uh, I'm, I'm actually higher than the locking now. So my plan is, I've just come across the stream and I've filled up my water there. So I'm thinking I'm just heading straight up, um, pretty steep, rough ground to the summit of the first hill, which is called Benger or Beg. And that'll save me 
going down to the locker and up to the beer lift, dropping stuff off. It, it'll just make it a more direct route, but it's going to be, uh, going to be a, bit, a bit more work with the heavy pack on. Um, that's the plan, whether it happens or not, I'm not entirely sure. But it's still lovely, we're at uh, half past five now, and I don't know if you know what this mountain is behind me. Have a think and uh, see if you recognise it, I'll re reveal all later when we're camped up. But it's a very, very famous mountain in Scotland, so. Lovely, can't complain, views are fantastic, let's just get cracked on and uh, get this hard work done. Right, let's get this heavy, uh, heavy sack on. Having collected my water, water from the stream high in the hillside, yeah, I was going to be heading directly towards the summit. And the weight of the bag was increased because the water was full. And as I headed more directly towards the summit, the, the ground got rougher and rougher. And there was no paths. The, la the last path was way down at the beach at the loch. And the ground got uh, a lot more rockier and a lot more heathery as I headed up the slope. And that slope just got steeper and steeper and steeper as I made, made it towards the summit of the first mountain, Ben Gerard Beg. As I got closer and closer to the summit ridge, the gradient started to ease and after what seemed like an age, I was starting to crest the hill and getting towards the top of the ridge where the views started to open up and gave me those views I hadn't seen all day out further west. It was rather nice. Scramble. Look at that view though. I'm so glad I'm here. <laughs> right, not far until the summit. Oh man. What a place. Fantastic. What a place indeed. And this ridge up to the summit was just absolutely beautiful. And there was some easily scrambling at this point, but I could see further back there would have been a few steeper sections which might have proved tricky with that big backpack on. Anyway, I was soon approaching the summit of the first mountain. <laughs> well, this is the top of the first mountain, Ben Gerard Began. The wee pile of stones is a bit of an injustice. Uh, the, the, the majesty of this peak, it, it's hard to say, it's hard to put it into, into words. This should be a big massive cairn announcing the summit because it is just fabulous. I mean, it's been, it's been hard work coming up the quarry there. But this view, the, the view when you come over the ridge, when you see the view that you've not seen all day, it's just out towards the seaboard side. I can see a way down the river that I came up and biked in and out to the out to the, the Summer Isles and the western seaboard and the next mountain is looking rather imposing. And right into the Fisherfield Forest and this mountain over here that I was talking about earlier on, the mighty Ancella. What a fantastic mountain it looks like from this view as well. And of course over here is Sail Moor. We'll talk about that later as well. But yeah, I'm uh, going to sit here for five, five minutes and I'm going to drop down. I noticed on the, the map there's a burn just off to the right. So I'm going to go down and try and find that because I don't fancy going all the way down to the, the walking that I'd originally planned to go to. But yeah, I'm going to, going to sit here for a while and enjoy this fabulous view. What a place though. Look at this. Woo! Having sat for a wee while, 
taking in those absolutely brilliant views from the summit, I was very much aware that I was still on a race against time. I had to get to this other mountain, which you can see just over my shoulder there, and that involved quite a bit of a, a descent and then a reascent uh, on the way to to getting there. And we were yeah, we were certainly cracking on for time. I'd been I'd been walking and cycling for most of the day, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't quite tired. So I still wasn't sure whether I was going to get to the summit of this mountain, but I was really really determined to, to try my best and see if I could get to it because it just looks like such an amazing summit. I was soon ascending the second mountain, Ben Gerard Moore, and it was a tough. It was it was tough going because I'd had to stop again. I'd managed to find a water source on the way down off the first summit, and that uh, increased the weight of my bag because I I had to have enough water for my tea later in the evening, and also for my breakfast and coffee the following morning. So I'd filled up as much water as I could, which would see me you know, water and fed, but the other thing is it just adds so much weight to the backpack. It also got the thighs and calves working as I headed up. Ooh. Oh, just doing a wee piece of camera on my action camera. I am tired, it's uh, quarter past eight. I'm able to see from my shoulder, that's where I've come from. And away down there's uh, the walk. So what, a, what an evening, it's lovely. Not much wind tense, but I'm able to do this. Hopefully you can hear me okay, I've not got my microphone on. But wait till I turn around and you can see what the final sting in the tail for today is. <sighs> Look at that. That's 200 metres of near vertical scree that uh, I need to tackle now before getting up there. I'm going to be pushing it for uh, getting the tent up and enjoying tea before sunset. I think it's going to be, be a bit of a rush when I get up there, but I suppose I better stop procrastinating and uh, yeah, start tackling this bad boy. Yeah, let's go. As expected, the final pull to the summit of Ben Gerard Moor was steep. There was lots of scree and much care was required, but after about an hour of toiling up here, I was soon striding with an extra spring in my step towards the summit of Ben Gerard Moor, where I was hoping to camp. And what a place this was! Look at this! Oh my god! <laughs> Woohoo! What a summit! Wow! Right, I need to get somewhere to pitch! <laughs> Unbelievable! Unbelievable! Wow, right! Let's get a tent out! So after gathering my breath, because it really was taken away by the views and the, just, just the location of the summit, it really is one of the finest tops I've ever been on. Anyway, I, s I had to take the backpack off because I'd been on the go for quite a bit of time and now it's time to get the tent set up and the sleeping bag out and the sleeping pad set up and then once I'd done that I was going to get my tea and just settle down and enjoy this fantastic, fantastic perch on top of a mountain.
once I'd got the tent up, and you know what, it was actually relatively flat up here, there was nice nice places to pitch the tent, usually I'm searching about for quite some time to find a, a level, untussocky, unrocky part of the ground to put the tent, but surprisingly on such a dramatic peak there was this small area of fr flat grass with magnificent views, it was almost the perfect pitch. Anyway, once the uh, the tent was up, I had to get the sleeping pad blown up and then uh, fish the uh, fish the sleeping bag out of the bottom of the rucksack and get that into the tent. And once that was done, I could then start to concentrate on getting some more calories inside me and getting something for my tea. It was going to be a late, late evening meal for me. Right, I need to leave that for a wee while. That's my tea on, finally! Oh! Sorry I've not done much pieces to camera, or many pieces to camera, it's been such a rush. It's now 10 to 10, sunset. There's not much happening, there's something happening over there, way out towards the uh, Outer Hebrides. Lovely, you never know what it might, uh, it might catch as the sun goes down. Anyway, I've got, as you've probably seen, um, I've spent the last maybe half an hour putting the tent up getting everything ready and I've just, uh, I'm having a late, a late tea, but what a summer this is. I thought the views from, the views from uh, Ben Gerard Beg were fantastic, really good and there was some nice lovely ridge walking going along, along there, but this summer, as you've probably seen, oh my god, it's a bit, uh, a bit out there, a bit airy and just absolutely stunning. Um, I mean, <laughs> you can't really convey how uh, how amazing it is. I mean, literally, there's ridges going down that way. There's big, massive cliffs just over there. I mean, the tent's pitched on the uh, I don't know, it's maybe ten foot wide uh, piece of ground that takes you up to the summit. You've got views over to Fisherfield, Torridon, back out to the sea, and the mountain I was talking about earlier on over here is Anchelach, and it's just looking absolutely fab. The sun's gone away, the cloud has come in, which is, which is fine. In fact, I actually helped, um, because if the sun was out the whole way, I would have been, <laughs> I would have been really struggling. It's taken me probably just shy of nine hours to get up here. And with the big backpack on, uh, I expect that I will sleep well tonight. So I'm gonna shut up now, I'm gonna go and have my, uh, have my tea, and I'll maybe report back um, once I'm snuggled down in the tent. But uh, yeah, this is just absolutely brilliant. Wow, what a place. I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> so I settled down on a lovely, dry, flat piece of ground to have my tea under those cloudy skies. I was a wee bit disappointed that the sun hadn't reappeared, but you know what? I was just keen to get some calories inside me. It had been a long, long trip to reach the summit of this mountain. Right, it is... it's 10.30 now. And... It's, uh, as I said earlier, the sun had disappeared, but there's a wee slither. Look at that! I don't know if you'll be able to make it out in this wee action camera. I'm using the main camera to do a time lapse. But the sun, this big yellow ball of fire, has just showed itself again. It's just touching the horizon now. But what I'm really excited about is there's this, this cloud. There's a small chance that 
as the sun dips over the horizon, it might illuminate this cloud. And if that happens, well, I'll be very, <laughs> I'll be very excited. But uh, let's just wait and see. But this is just fantastic. Look at that! Wow. Woo. Wow. <laughs> that was absolutely spectacular. I mean. When I saw the uh, the sun, I think I just did a bit of the camera on the um, on the, the the action camera, and when um, when I saw the sun appearing in that slither, I just I was just really hoping and praying that it was going to catch the cloud, and I it did. It's just been lovely. It, it's just something special about being on these mountains, which are quite close to the sea, and when you get the the sunsets like that, it's just brilliant. And especially because I was not expecting it. As I said earlier on, the sun disappeared. This cloud rolled in, and I wasn't really holding out much hope. I'll take a few. I've, I've taken a few pictures just on my phone because I was doing a time lapse on the camera, so I'll stick them up now. I'm, I've, I've no idea how they'll come out on the phone, but wow, still spectacular. Uh, it's hard to. It's always d difficult for me to convey the beauty through the video camera because it's never as good when I look at <laughs> look back at the footage to actually being here and seeing that and the whole western sky just going this lovely pink colour over the northern uh, part of the Outer Hebrides it's just absolutely spectacular it's dying away now but it was just it was just the, the whole bit of this cloud was just pink absolutely superb and anyway I don't know if you can make it out just over my shoulder here there's a wee lump that's a hole called Sail Moor and I'll talk about that in, an, uh, in another bit to camera because we've still got lo <laughs> lots of adventure but that was the last time I was here and I had a fantastic day on that hill. It just looks like a wee, a wee bump uh, from here. But um, anyway, back to the sunset. Fantastic. Um, I'm going to go and chill in the tent now. It's quarter to 11 at night, believe it or not. And there's still, a, there's still quite a bit of light around. Um, the longest day was a couple of weeks ago. So it doesn't really get dark. So I'll not be doing any astro stuff. Uh, I might get up early to see if there's... Uh, to see if there's a nice uh, sunrise because I've got a big day planned tomorrow as well. I'm going to descend off these two hills. These are both Corbett's, by, by the way, and it's two Corbett's I haven't done before. And I tell you what, they're two of the best mountains, not just Corbett's, I think I've ever, ever visited. Um, there's another Corbett I'm hoping to do tomorrow, which I've got a bit of a, a story about because I've come to do that before, but didn't make it up. So I will, um, I will tell you all about that tomorrow, providing all goes to plan. But uh, yeah, I'm going to go and sit in the tent and have some peanuts. No whiskey today because I, kn I know I've got a big, I knew I had a big day uh, tomorrow so I thought I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to have my wee tipple tonight. Sorry guys but anyway I'm going to enjoy the, the, the rest of this sunset and I'll see you later. Wow. So I enjoyed the last embers of light as they faded from the western horizon and headed back to my tent to try and get some sleep before the big day tomorrow.
Wow, <laughs> what a morning. It's now, it's actually nearly six o'clock and I've been up, I woke up at four and it was, uh, yeah, it was bright daylight. Uh, sunrise was just about five past four, but it was actually raining at that point. It was a uh, light rain and I've just kind of milled about, well, I sat in the tent for a while, but I've been milling around camp. I've had my coffee and my scotch egg and my bar of Snickers, which has been good. And uh, I'm glad I didn't have any whiskey last night because one of the things about camping on top of a mountain when it comes to resources is water and uh, I had to use some of the water because of a, a dehydrated meal which I had to use some water in last night and then use the rest of the water for my coffee this morning. It, it is a big cup of coffee mind you. But anyway the sun is starting to come out, it's just the, the sun rays um, over the top of Anchilic now and the, the landscape behind me is all speckled with light. It's absolutely gorgeous. This really is one of the top places in Scotland in my opinion and I can remember looking over to this brace of hills that I've done uh, yesterday, Ben Gerard Beg and Ben Gerard Moor, when I was on the top of Sale Moor, and just the, the views over here, it just looked like such a wild and remote place, and I've not been disappointed <laughs> when I've come here. I mean, look at this, look at this view behind me. That's looking away down to Chenival uh, Bothy. It's away down there somewhere, but what a grand setting. Is there a better peak? In Scotland, I mean, this is so dramatic. There's just ridges everywhere, as I said yesterday, and it's just straight down exposure. Uh, an airy perch, for sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mill around, t uh, yeah, mill, mill around the campsite for a bit longer, but I do have a big day ahead of me, so I'm going to, um, I will have to sort of pack up tent and get cracked on. I think there's more distance involved today, and uh, another Munro, uh, sorry, not another Munro, another Corbett to do, which I'm looking forward to, so. Yeah, let's just enjoy the views just now before uh, striking camp. Wow. Although I had a big day ahead of me, I was keen just to, I don't know, just slow down a wee bit this morning and enjoy this summit because it really, really was such a fantastic place. So I, yeah, I, I did a bit of exploring around the summit ridges and went up to some of the other peaks nearby just to take in the views and watch the morning light and take some photographs. After spending some time exploring and taking some snaps, it was soon time to get back down to the, the pitch or back up to the pitch on the summit and get the tent away and the sleeping bag away. I never look forward to this, but when, when I actually get around to doing it, it never seems as bad as what I was thinking it was going to be. <laughs> it doesn't take very long. So I took the, took the tent down, got the sleeping bag rolled up and the sleeping pad into the back of the backpack. And uh, yeah, just, just looked forward to my day ahead.
So off I headed further into the wilderness and I had to negotiate that steep slope. And I was aware that I was actually going further and further away from the road at this point. And in fact, the area I was now heading into is one of the most remote in the UK and furthest from any road in Scotland. Oh, this is some pretty rough, <laughs> rough pathless hillside I'm on now. Oh, it's now quarter to eight. And it was a steep, steep descent of Ben Gerrard Moor. I don't know if you remember that scree path, but my God, I had to be careful coming down there. It was, it was all dry and loose, and I just had to watch my footing. Anyway, I need to head. I'm actually heading. What you, what usually happens with me anyway on a summit camp is I go up to the summit of camp, and then the next day I head home. So the summit camp's usually the furthest away point. But today, because I'm, I'm incorporating another, a third mountain, I've actually got to head further away from the car, so I'm heading even further into the, the wilderness of Fisherfield before uh, heading back down, so it's going to be a long day. Anyway, I need to get some water, I'm, I'm just about out, so I'm heading for the, uh, the head of this loch down here, where I'm going to fill up, and then it's a steep pull up along, and then other mountains over there, so yeah, I need to shut up and uh, I need to stop talking. Let's get walking! <laughs> or enough talking, let's get walking. I can't even remember my own catchphrase. Maybe it's just I'm tired. <laughs> right, let's go. Ah, oh, dear. So I headed down to the loch where I needed to get some well, well needed water because I was quite dehydrated by this, this point having used all my water for the evening meal the night before and the morning coffee. And this loch in, just on the other side of it, is apparently the most remote spot in the UK in terms of distance from the nearest road. So I was pretty well, yeah, pretty well out there at this point. Ah, path. Woo! That's me on the Monroe Baggers path now. This is going to make a big bit of difference. Big bit of difference, a big difference even. It's been pretty rough coming down off uh, Ben Gerard Moor. No path, so I'm really looking forward to having a lovely path to hike up. Anyway, a wee ascent up this. Uh, up the steep pool now and then I'll, I'll maybe stop stop up there and report back. <laughs> The path was just lovely, having spent so much time on yeah, pathless ground and rough ground, it, it makes such a difference to get your feet in a path. Anyway, I was just going to mention at this point here how, how useful these buffs are. Um, in, in the hot weather like it was at the moment, I, I soak them in water and uh, give myself a wee, a wee soaking over the head and then put the damp buff back on underneath my cap and it helps to keep me cool. And having the buff underneath my cap also helps soak up any sweat in the hot weather and protects my ears and part of my, my, my neck from, from getting sunburn. So there's plenty of uses for the buff. Look at this. Ooh. Oh, After quite a bit of walking along the path, I was searching for a place to stop just before the final ascent up the third mountain and came across this beach which was just idyllic and it must be one of the most remote beaches in the UK. Anyway, I had been here before and yeah, it's not a bad place to sit and take it all in and rest, rest the legs and shoulders before heading up the final summit of the trip.
What a cracking wee spot this is, <laughs> I tell you. I almost forgot about this uh, this wee beach. But I remembered it, and I'll tell you why I can remember this beach. I was going to tell you a wee story about the last time I was here, and I was all set to do this corbett, which is up behind us there. It's kind of up and over. It's not it's not as steep and as dramatic as the last two mountains I was on. But I'd um, I'd come in from Pulyu, which is a long way to the west, and I'd spent the day before going up another few mountains and had wild camped maybe a few miles over. And on the last day, I decided I was going to come up here and head up this Corbett. So off I set and I brought my bike in, there's a place called Carnmore, and I left my bike there and trundled all the way up the hill. And I was just at this point here and we're about 300 metres vertically and the weather was deteriorating. <laughs> and uh, I noticed some, some, in fact there's some ponies over there, I'd love to say they're wild ponies but they're not, they'll, they'll be the gamekeepers ponies because once again I know this because I came across a couple of gamekeepers or gullies beside a pony sheltering behind a big rock with their full tweeds on and I could just see an old chap and a stalker heading off with their rifles. Now this was stalking season and I had contacted the estate before I left to make sure there was no stalking going on and they told me there wasn't but what I didn't realise was the estate that I'd contacted finished <laughs> or their boundary was maybe a mile that way and this was a different estate and they were stalking so I came up here and I obviously wasn't going to interfere with their stalking so I ended up going over and having a wee play there's some lockins over there and round here around the beach uh, under a vagin and, and Rua Stack Moor and uh, I didn't go up them but I remember then having to head down <laughs> and I got back to the tent knackered, it was starting to rain, the wind was picking up and I sat on my, my ground mat in the tent and, and it exploded. There was a battery or something underneath it and I didn't fancy sleeping on an uneven surface so I ended up uh, bailing and my wife managed to get me a hotel, I think it was a hotel called the Loch Marie Hotel. Anyway, that's uh, the story of when I was last year so I'm going to sit here and enjoy the sunshine at the beach before uh, tackling this Monroe. I think I am about as far away um, from civilization as I can be at the moment. So from now on, I'm heading back towards the car. A lovely remote spot. Just in case you've been thinking I've been walking the whole time, there's been plenty of bits like this where I've, <laughs> I've been sat on Mars absolutely knackered. Not a bad place to sit on Mars would be absolutely knackered though. Look at that. Well, it's uh, Rua Stack Moor, a Vagin, and a mighty Sleok in there, and then round here is uh, Ben Lair. What a place. And behind me up there, uh, is where I'm going at some point soon. <laughs> oh. uh, so I eventually pulled myself up from my perch. Now I still had a wee bit of a scent to get up to this remote Corbett, Benachashgan Moor, and yeah, I was certainly, <clears throat> certainly very, very tired and very, very glad to be approaching the summit of this uh, prized and remote. Corbett, which lies right in the boundary between the sort of Fisherfield area or the Fisherfield Forest and the Letteryu Forest. A prized mountain indeed. And a welcome sight the Cairn was. I'll tell you what, I'm glad to be at this third summit. <laughs> it's taken me, well what time are we at now? It's 12 o'clock, midday. 
and I left, I think I left the campsite on Ben Gerard Moor at about 7 this morning, so that's four and a half, five hours, shall we say, to get around and do the big pack. And I think I'm going to be on the go for another, I'm, I'm, I'm no, by no means uh, home and dry yet, I'm still miles away, <laughs> miles away from my bike. And then when I get to my bike, I'm still miles away from the car, so I still need to keep my um, keep my wits about me. Um, it's pretty featureless and, and wild up here. I, another thing I was going to say, there's a change in the weather as well. It's a wee bit more hazy, and I think there's... I don't know, I've just got a feeling these, these clouds are, are bubbling up. I think we might get some rain later on. I just hope that I'm back in the car <laughs> by the time it starts. There were forecast thunderstorms um, later today and tomorrow. But, yeah, just have to, I've got waterproofs with me, but I, I don't want to be in the hill if there's a thunderstorm. Anyway, I'm going to sit here a bit, for a bit longer, have a few more uh, treats. been having some milky, milky bar buttons to give me some sugar. Rest my feet, but I tell you what, this is the comfiest. Whoever's compiled, com, compiled, whoever's put this cairn together has done a grand job in, in this bit here. It is the comfiest seat at a cairn I think I've ever had. Or it's maybe just something to do with me being absolutely knackered, I don't know. But, uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sh going to shop now and just take in the views. I'm not sure if it was the fact that I was absolutely knackered, but the the wee seat that I found on the side of the side of the cairn really was the comfiest seat I think I've ever encountered at a cairn. I was able to lie back, and there was even a wee stone as a headrest. It was lovely. But anyway, as I said, there was still a long, long way to go. This was by no means over yet, and I had to descend off the off the hill, and I could see the two Ben Gerard mountains over to my right as I was descending and they looked so far away I had covered a lot of ground. Anyway, descending the hill it wasn't too bad, it was quite grassy but there certainly weren't any paths until I got to the stalker's path. Ah, path! So if you can see that that's me on the path again. This is the path from, I think it goes from Carnmore down and round, it's going to take me back Hopefully to uh, where the bike is. It's marked on the uh, OS maps as not going quite as far as that, but I'm hoping it continues round. But, oh, so nice to be on a path again. Oh, I haven't been on a path since I started, well, since the beach. And that was a long time ago, so yeah, good to be on the path. Right, stop for a bit to camera. Well, it's uh, it's moving on a bit. It's two o'clock now, and I've just come down into a valley and back up the other side. And any uphill now is really, <laughs> it's really taxing. Although this path, I think it's a stalker's path, is uh, is helping massively. I'd probably say uh, since I left, the track with the bike was oh. 80% of it, 85%'s been off, off path. Uh, really, just this bit, and then when I came down uh, after I filled up with water, and before ascending up the uh, the third mountain uh, at the beach, is where there was any tracks, and it does make a massive difference. I know I've said that before. If you can get a track, it's so much nicer than having to bash your way through the heather and bogs and all that sort of stuff. Anyway, the sun has been coming and going but there's still some black clouds about. I'm still feeling a, a change in the air perhaps. I just hope I can get down off the hill of any, before any thunderstorms come or materialise because it's that really sort of hot muggy way. There is a slight breeze though so the midges haven't been much of an issue. 
right, I can see where I need to go and it's still miles away, so I better get going. Try and get back down to this bike. Let's go. Whoa. So off I set down the stalker's path and unfortunately it did the end and I had to cut off and uh, yeah, from here back to the bike was some of the roughest ground I'd encountered on the whole trip. It was just horrendous. <laughs> if I'm being honest with you, this bit here isn't too bad. I couldn't even film the bit that was, um, which was really bad because it was on really steep, steep ground with lots of boulders and holes and what have you. Anyway, I soon got over that. Well, didn't soon get over that. It took me ages, and I was back on the floodplain, heading towards the heading towards the bike. And at this point, those big black clouds, well, yeah, they caught up with me, and it started to rain as I got back to the bike. I was certainly glad to get the big backpack off, but uh, yeah, that rain, it wasn't sort of fine, drizzly rain, it was those big dollops of rain that you get when, when there's thunderstorms around. Although the thunder didn't arrive, it was, uh, it was wet enough for me to get my, my waterproofs on. And yeah, I had to do that whilst I uh, got the bike and the pannier all set up and then basically unpacked my rucksack to get as much of the contents of it out and into the pannier bike to take the weight, weight off my shoulders for the final cycle out. Hey guys, there's not been many pieces to camera in the last few while because, uh, well, I'm absolutely knackered. And the last stretch coming back once I came off that stalker's path was just honestly absolute nightmare. Vertical heather, boulders, holes, oh, you name it, it was just a nightmare. Anyway, as you can see, I'm now back in the bike. I've got about another eight kilometres to go uh, until I'm back at the car. I then have, well, until I'm back at the road, then I've got about another kilometre to go uphill because I couldn't get parked at the end of the road, so I had to go further up the hill to get parked. Uh, anyway, the rain's on as well, so I don't think I'm going to be in the mood for doing many more pieces to camera, so I'm going to end the video here. What a fantastic trip, even though I'm feeling it now. Hope you, you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, stay safe out there, and I'll see you in the next adventure, providing I can make it back out of here. Oh man, right, let's go. Right folks, sorry for that uh, rather rapid end to the video. Uh, by the end of the, the, the walk and when I was on the bike, I was absolutely knackered. Uh, it really did take, me out, take it out of me going into the great wilderness. But what a trip, what a trip. And um, I just thought I'd do this little bit to camera. Um, this was uh, the weekend after I did the trip, so I've, I've recovered. And I just thought I'd yeah, just, just talk a wee bit about it, give you some um, information about it and what to do and maybe what not to do. Now, what I would say is that peak Ben Gerard Moore, which I eventually got to, the, the one that I wild camped on, what a peak. I mean, it was just sensational. You, you don't get the same feeling of how good it was from the video but really is sensational and I think what adds to it is the fact that it's so remote. It is really one of the most remote uh, peaks in, in Scotland. Um, you can do it from other directions as well. You can The, the, the more common way is to come in via a, a route uh, that takes you via a bothy called Cheneval but you could potentially access uh, the, the area from Kinloch U and also Pool U but uh, yeah whichever way you go it's a long way. 
so that was it. That's the that's the first thing I was going to say. It's if you're going to do it, just just be wary of that. It's it's a pretty remote and serious area with a lot of rugged landscape and a lot of it, as you saw, doesn't have paths. Certainly the uh, the areas I were on, I was on, uh, there was there was hardly any paths, <laughs> which was a nightmare in, in, at times, which I didn't film. Uh, I was also um, I was keen to leave it for a dry period, which I did. It had been dry for the week before, so. The ground, which would have been really boggy, was quite dry. So if you're going to go and do a route similar to that, keep it for a, a dry spell. Plus the weather was great. The, you know, you don't want to go up there when you can't see those views because those views were, were were practically. It was just some of the best views that uh, I've ever seen. A few other things that I did because I knew it was it was summertime in Scotland, um, and for me, I know that most people talk about the midge, but for me, as you you know, if you watch the videos, uh, ticks and Lyme's disease is a big thing now. I made sure, I've already treated all my clothing with permethrin spray but I soaked, <laughs> literally a few days before I went on this trip I soaked all the gear that I was wearing and my shoes and the tent in permethrin and two days out in the wilderness uh, I didn't pick up a tick which was good and I was going through as I said pathless terrain where there, there was lots of deer about so that stuff really does um, yeah, does does do the trick. So that's just a few things. I hope you really enjoyed the video. Um, this will this will be the first video that I've done that's uh, nudging the, uh, the hour mark. So I'm hoping you're still watching at this point. <laughs> it might be a bit too much, but uh, anyway, gonna gonna end it here, and I'll see you on Wednesday for uh, another adventure.